we're just about to head out. It's high tide. We're going to be looking for uh, whatever's out there on high tide. Probably uh, mackerel, maybe some bass. We'll try a couple of different things and see what's uh, what's out there. And afterwards, we'll uh, probably check some pots on the way back in. We'll see how we get on. Right, we're pulling ancient pot in Troy's super secret location. And I'm expecting to see lobster in it, whether they're big enough is another thing. And if I don't, I'm going to be surprised. Wait for me to be surprised. <laughs> yeah, normally this is the spot for lobster. But it depends how many people have been here, if they've put pots here, if it's been fished or not fished. bit on the sand, I can see that. There it is, there's one in there, but it's not big. But it's got one, so... At least it's got lobster. We'll move it slightly, because you it varies along here. You've got to be either a bit to the left, a bit to the right, that kind of thing. To be right where you want to be. The baits had it as well. We didn't have a lot of bait the other day, so... But there's been a little bit of a roll by the looks of it, ju judging by the weed that's in it. They were giving a, a little bit of swell yesterday, and that doesn't help. There it is, the spider crab. Mm. Camo spider. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at the lobster. There he is. There he is. His glory. He'll be a little bit too small, mm. so he'll go back. Taking the slow route. <laughs> yeah, he's just floating. Right, let's get this back down and we'll go and check, check some more. We're just going to uh, pull a few pots while the tide's high. It's not the best time to pull because you can't position the rocks properly, but we're waiting for it to drop a little bit before we go out there. You can get a bit lumpy when it's full high tide out there with the, with the size of this tide. Set. Where's the inkwells? They should be here as well. Straight ahead. Is that the inkwell? No, this is the inkwell, and that's the double set further up. We moved the double set further up. I remember moving that one. That red set, I remember I thought, we'll drop it one more time. If we don't catch it, I'll move it. This is our inkwell pot. We're going to check. We went to check our other pot, the green pot, but it seems to be missing. So we'll, um, we'll have a look when the tide drops. Be under as well, but he's a lobster. Watch out, he's, he's gonna have you. It's the trouble with coming in at a lobster from the front, he's ready for you. Yeah, <laughs> here's our gauge. It's not gonna be far under, you know. There you go, gauge. Yeah, I think he's still, we will be under there. Yeah, he's under. Not far, though. Look, yeah. look at that. A mill, maybe. There you go. Back he goes as well. He's taking the faster route. Right, let's bait up. Now we moved these a bit because they haven't caught much where we had them for a little while, so it's here. One. I didn't see that. <laughs> That's small. That's why we moved it. <laughs> yeah, it's not too bad. That one would be size, I think. Oh, we've had a lobster in every pot so 
Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's a nice one. I'll gauge it after, but we don't need to gauge that one because it's definitely slide. Wow. No, I didn't see it. It was up in the top there. I was looking down because you was expecting yeah. things to fall down, but... Yeah, no, that's a pretty good one. But we will gauge it, just for the heck of it. Even though I know it's size. You can go from the back of the shell of the eye socket, you see it's within, well within the eye socket, or you go from the inside of the eye socket carefully, and you see at the back of the shell there that it's that much oversized. So that's a perfectly good lobster. And he got three hooks. So he just came out to fish quite deep. We've had a couple of drops, nothing, and all of a sudden, boom, fish. It caught me unaware. Yeah, I mean, we've had a couple of drifts with absolutely nothing, and we moved slightly. There they go. Told ya. Told ya. Yep. It's the horse mackerel. We're on the horse mackerel, Mark. Those are beautiful, though. Those are. Look at the size of them. Yep, and I did catch one on the bear hook. <laughs> I got bear hooks on the bottom of this. Normally put bait in them, I haven't got any bait, so just using bear hooks. Work. There they are, I can see the, the uh, patch now. Right in the box. So I've just hooked into something biggish. I think it's probably foul hooks. Yeah, my bare hooks. I've got three lures on at the top, but everything else is bare hooks underneath. Catching, you pack them up, tail and head, and you don't lose them. I mean, look at that prime out oh, spike on my own hook. Look at that for a prime horse mackerel. That's the size of them. That's what a horse mackerel should look like, not these little tiddlers. Although the tiddlers, very good for bass. So there you go. Top tip today. That's mackerel and horse mackerel. Oh, well, you got dinner? Yeah, <laughs> that's a good size mackerel. Yeah, well. nice. They mix, they mix together quite often. He's gone out the box. He's gone out the box. He's thinking outside the box. Ooh, heck, here we go. Yeah. Okay. She might have some today, maybe, possibly. Yep, 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 yep. Ooh, that's a pollock, that's a pollock, that's a pollock. Hey. 
pollock on a bear hook. Troy's fishing. How's was about that. Who needs bait, eh? Just use bear hooks. <laughs> you're, you're impressed, eh? And it's a good pollock as well. There we go, a couple of mackerel. And a couple more mackerel. We're lining up. Small. Very small. And that's your fish there, look. That's what he would. There's a little fish. There's your fish there, look. That's what it would have been. That's what I was saying about the birds and stuff as well. <laughs> I mean, it's not bad. It's not bad. Can you give us a size check on that one in a second? When you've, um, yeah, we'll give you a size check in a sec. See what you're dealing with there. And it's gone. Got to give that one a measure over there. And then we'll pop that back. That's a 42 fish. That's that's a minimum size bass that you're allowed to take over here. Put a bit of dogfish on that one. I got a bass in this one, so it gives it a bit of a mix. No, 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 
illegal. We've got one, only one claw. along this edge if I got it right. There is an edge along here which you've got to get just right. It's very tricky. You can never quite figure it out and then one day you see it and you get it. It's got to be just right. A bit like this one behind over there. The same which is really sharp edge. And if you get it just right you get a lot of small ones. It's almost like there's like a wall of small holes. And they live. If you get it wrong it could land badly on the Just under. There's that one, that'll be on the size as well, just about. Yeah, that one's under. Something a little bit different, a small brown crab. is well and truly over, yeah, about the same thing over. Oh, that one landed terribly. Just thought I'd try a little bit in the bay and uh, hook something. Feels like seaweed to be honest. Might wake up in a minute. I've got a dive ground here, see the red bumps swimming around there. Um. Oh, 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 only gonna need the net. I don't know how. Oh, no, it's not that big. There you go, just in the bay, just training a lure, I was only doing it for about five minutes, uh, there you go. Crab. He's lost a claw, but he's actually growing one back. See, tiny little claw. Black spot that affects the brown crab. So is he. You don't want to eat them there like that, they can mix them with it. Yeah. Then, baby lobster. Something 
bag now we've got a conger eel spider crab and there is a lobster lobster's probably going to be under but it might make it very pale lobster this one Sometimes when they're more orangey, they've uh, just, just got an older shell. Put him back. See that one go down because he's nice and light. He's taking the slow route at the moment. Yep, he's just going to float down. Sometimes they kick backwards, but quite often they'll just float. Well, we've got two pots to do still, and we're going to do them on the way in because they're so shallow anyway. We've got to go that way, so or near that way. We'll go and check them. A paddle, paddle handy in case we get a bit too close to the rocks because I think we're going to get a bit too close to the rocks. Now, this is why uh, partly why I decided to come in with a little boat, knowing that it'd be quite shallow and it'd be uh, even more of a tricky maneuver to get in here with a big boat. Start pulling us because we're going to end up on the rock in a minute if we don't pull us clear. There's the pot. You must just put your hand in it. Is there anything in it? I don't see much. Careful with your height. Nope, only a baby spider crab in there. Right, chuck a bit of beet in. Beet. There it is, just under the boat. Again, you can almost reach down and grab it, almost. You'd be walking around it on a big, big, big low tide. Oh, nothing in it, right. 